Welcome back to Upgrade's channel today. So in today's video, we are looking at ungroup frequency distribution. How to construct ungroup frequency distribution table. That's what we are looking at in today's video. So let's jump in. What is ungroup frequency distribution table? Ungroup frequency distribution. Okay. We are saying that there is a set of possible values of variable that is discrete together with the associate word frequencies. There is a set of all possible values of variable to work a discrete together with the associate frequencies. All right. So we are saying that to construct an ungroup frequency distribution, these are the steps that we need to go through. So when solving ungroup frequency distribution question, the following steps are used. We are saying that one, list all the values of variable in ascending order of magnitude that is we are listing all the values from the least to the highest you are taking into account all the data set from the least to or to the highest that is the ascending order of magnitude and ii form a tally column for so at the end of the day once you have all the values listening from ascending order in order of magnitude you form a tally for each word variable is that okay so once the Tally column will help us know the number of frequencies for that particular value it occurred. That is the tally column side. And then lastly, you sum up the tallies to obtain the frequencies of each word variable. That is the frequency sum up to the total number of what observations. So that is the step that we're going to go through in constructing on group frequency distribution. So let's take a question. So example one. The following is a record of a number of absentees per day in a factory over 21 days. So these are the records that we have been given as an ungrouped word data. So you want to present them in an ungrouped frequency distribution form. So how do you go by that? So the first step here is that we need to identify the least variable, the least data, and then the highest word data. So from here, we can clearly see that the least data will start from what or the least variable will start from what zero is that okay and the highest going to be what four so in that we're going to have our table here we're going to have number of absentees and then you have your tally a column for tally a column for tally a column for tally and then a column for what frequency a column for frequency all right so, you should first of all arrange the data in ascending order of magnitude. That is from the least variable to the highest variable. So, you realize that the least starts from zero and then the highest is what? Four. So, we're going to start from zero, then we move on to what? One, then we come to two, then we come to three, and we come to what? Four. Is that okay? So, these are the ascending order of the variable, the data set here. All right. So, once you have that, we come back to the tally. So how many zeros occurred in this set of data? So we have what? How many sets of zeros did occur in this set of what data? So for zeros, we have one here, we have another zero here, you also have another zero, you also have another zero. So it's what four. So you can have four screws, four screws as what tally. So one, two, three, and four. Then you have it as what frequency written there. One here, we have another one here, we also have another one here. So the one we can see that we have what? one occurred what seven times so we can have our strokes seven strokes so it's going to be one two three four but once you get to the four since the stroke exceed five the fifth stroke should cross the first four strokes and you have your remaining two here as a stroke so that should fetch you what seven right and then we come to the two so two two we have one here you also have another one here making it two you also have another you're making it three and Let's see, you also have one here making it four in the third row. So for the two, we have four strokes. So we have one, two, three, and four. And that should fetch you four here. Is that okay? When it comes to the three, we have one here. You also have one that you're making it two. So I think three is only what two. So you're gonna have a two stroke. So one, two, and that should fetch you what two here. And when it comes to four, we have one here, another one here, another one here, making it three. Another one here making it what four. So we have four. So four it occurred what four times. So you have what four strokes one, two, three, and four. And you have your frequency four written here. So now to determine the total frequency, it is a summation of four plus seven plus four plus two plus three. And that should fetch you what 21. You can check with your calculator 
and the total frequency. So the total frequency, the total frequency should be equal to what? 21 in that case. It should be equal to 21 in that case. And that, that's what we call an ungrouped frequency distribution. An ungrouped frequency distribution. So let's take note of that. Let's take note of that. So this is why we bring an end to the ungrouped frequency. So in our next session, we are going to discuss group frequency distribution, how we can represent set of data in group frequency distribution. If video was really helpful to you, please go ahead to like this video, subscribe to the channel and share it out with your friends as well. So I'll see you in the group frequency distribution. Thank you.